Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everyone's doing great. Um, see some a lot of familiar faces. Uh, looking forward to a great season. Uh, I guess, you know, before we even kick off with the opening statement, first and foremost, just to be sitting here talking about our season, you know, accolades have to go out to our administration, John David Wicker, our entire committee, our president of our university, um, just for our athletes to have an opportunity to, to practice and now have an opportunity to, to compete is uh has taken uh, a lot of effort, a lot of time, and and it's very much appreciated throughout our entire you know baseball program, the athletic department. There's a lot of moving parts to it, and it's a lot of work. Um, I think there's times that we've been all frazzled, but at the same time, we can't be more thankful to have the opportunity from the hard work everyone has done in our athletic department, all the way from our administration, our training room, our strength staff, um, our equipment room, um, obviously, our media relations. You're welcome, Mike, Jim. Um, but uh, it's been it's been a, a a road that I can tell you that's been great to to experience because talking with other uh, people that we do play or leagues around uh, our area, we're way ahead of the curve. And the, the things that we've done throughout the fall and moving into the spring, even though at times it's been cumbersome it's been unbelievable. And so that, that we have the opportunity and we're way ahead of a lot of people. And so um, all, all, the, all the things that we went through this fall and early part of the spring just to get here, um, again, it has trained us and prepared us to have the opportunity to compete uh, hopefully this coming weekend. So looking forward to that. Uh, you know, it's a short season last year. We felt like we put together a great baseball team for last year and and uh, we did we were off to a great start we were at uh, 10 and 6 we had two very grueling road, road trips to start the year went to South Carolina played in a tournament came out of there winning two out of three and then we came back from Oklahoma who was ranked at the time in the top 10 uh, we should have won two out of three but uh, um, the ball got a little wet for us at the end of that on Sunday our guys aren't used to playing in that kind of weather and we gave a game away on a Sunday but uh we had a really nice team assembled, and, and the cool part about that is we really only lost two guys off of last year's team. Casey Schmidt and Anthony Walters both were drafted. Um, we got some bonus guys back, some super seniors, uh, Ryan Orr, Mike Jarvis, and Jacob Cruz that have just done an unbelievable job of leadership, helping us kind of manage all the quirkiness to the season. So those three super seniors uh, we've leaned on tremendously and, and kind of coupled with all of that, we have an experienced pitching staff um, with an abbreviated schedule that uh, definitely bodes well, well for us. You know, we have a very deep, talented pitching staff. And then um, offensively on the defensive end, again, we're, we're littered with upperclassmen and experienced guys that have a lot of time at Division One baseball. So we're looking forward to having an opportunity to test it out this coming Friday. Hey, Coach, nice to see you. Um, San Diego State's done a phenomenal job in virtually all of its sports compared to problems in other conferences, other universities. What have you guys done outside the box? or What, what has made your situation so unique? Can you shed any light? And how many times a week do your kids get tested? Um, you know, the, the testing, for, I'll answer that question first, is that it, it's kind of varied between, you know, three and two, three times a week. Uh, this week we're going once, and then we'll start a cadence of twice a week um, after we start the season. But honestly, it's not outside the box. It's really more inside the box, Lee, is it, it's, it's that, that we had to follow some stringent protocols, whether it's um, temperature checks coming in every day, um, making sure that uh, we kind of bring, bring our guys in at different um, times during practice, making sure that they're spaced out. Um, heck, we didn't play catch for about a week and a half just to kind of get used to kind of how to manage ourselves on the baseball field and manage the social distancing, making sure that they're wearing the mask every day, even when they just come on the baseball field. And so um, now at this point, boy, that was way back in late September, early October. Now our guys are trained at that. They understand how to, um, you know, get up every day, do daily wellness forms that all our athletes do, do the temperature check as they come into the athletic department and then go on to their respective field or court. Um, and then once you get there, you have to stage and, and kind of maintain your social distancing. And, and again, talk about uh, the, the cleanliness is that we, we, we're spraying stuff down, whether it's a baseball or equipment, um, all day long. I mean, my hands are chapped from doing a lot of that stuff. But uh, at the same time, it's allowed us to, to kind of move forward and start to look more like 
baseball practice. At the beginning of, uh, of this whole deal, it wasn't like that. And so it's really not outside the box. It's actually working inside a box that sometimes can get cumbersome, especially when you're dealing with young people that, that are very social and they want to be next to their teammates and people. And and so that's that's part of their training. They understand now how important it is to kind of maintain, maintain all those protocols in order to have the opportunity to, to practice and compete. Well, one other question for me. Do you think there's going to be a college World Series in Omaha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As of right now, yeah, the, yeah, the championship's still in place right now. I um, mean, as you know, as everybody knows, you know that the schedules and and how those work moving through this entire year has been very fluid. But you know, as of right now, yes, they're they're planning for regionals and and the whole nine yards, and hopefully, you know, we can continue to kind of uh, get healthy around the country in order to kind of have those opportunities once we get to that point. But as of right now, yes, it's on schedule to do that. Hey, coach. Um, the Local players that you, you mentioned in our last conversation who have had the opportunity to, to live at home, is that something that's ongoing throughout this year, or was that just kind of the, the fall semester? Um, it, it's been throughout the year, and really it's kind of a decision, you know, I would say the majority of them made on their own, you know, just I think once they kind of understood that they didn't want to put themselves or their teammates in a, you know, if they did pop a positive, you know, the contact tracing gets very cumbersome and, and it could, you know, knock out three to 10 guys if, you know, if it's a really bad situation. So a lot of our local guys made that decision to stay at home and stay safe during, during not only the, the fall practice season, but obviously the spring season to kind of keep themselves a little bit more isolated from the, from, you know, having those, those contact tracing opportunities if something were to happen. Um, and then for Friday, should we expect Melton versus Rustad? That's what it's looking like. Troy Melton will start for us on Friday, and um, I'm not sure if USD's uh, officially announced that. I know that they had some some issues with with uh, um, you know th their program and COVID, but uh, right now I think that's the matchup we're looking for forward to on Friday. And um, I mean, there can't be too many better matchups around the country than those two. Um, could you just talk a little bit about what that matchup is and those two pitchers? Well, yeah, you know, if if there were more seats in the stands for scouts, it would be full. You know, I you know I don't know how that's gonna play out and getting getting get those guys, but it's gonna be a very heavily scouted matchup. Um, you know, heck, uh, the their guy. I don't even know if he gave up an earned run last year, or, or even leading up to. I mean, he's really, really good. And then Troy's been a, a dynamic guy that is still growing. He has a, a lot of room to grow in his ability and his his experience. So you're kind of looking at a little fresher dude with a very experienced guy. And you know, hopefully, you know, at least we can score one off of him. And Troy doesn't give up any. We'll be in good shape. Um, last question for me: um, Have you uh, nailed down the third game starter and kind of the back end of the bullpen? Um, you know, again, right now it looks like Mike Paredes will probably end up on Sunday. You know, back end of the bullpen will probably be Trey Brown um, as we enter the weekend. And again, just just uh, is is trying to maintain that and 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 manage that is very very critical based on the fact that our kids have not had the same level of training. So we're going to be very careful with it. So we can say that Troy's going to be a you know our closer, so to speak. But I don't know if he'll throw twice in a weekend this early in the season. So it could be a committee as we move through the first couple three weekends before we really kind of settle into a, 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 a cadence throughout the year. But you know, right now it would be Trey Brown. But you're going to see a host of, of uh, other guys kind of finishing games as well. Hi, coach. How's it going? Great. Good to see you. Yeah, you as well. Um, so my question for you today is, you know, in the past. You talked a lot about the importance of not only physical maturity, but also mental maturity. Um, so how have you seen the overall mental maturity of the team strengthen throughout the ups and downs of this pandemic? And how will that translate into this upcoming season? Love that question because we talk about it all the time. Our guys have had to grow up really fast, you know, and not only if you're a senior or junior, but, you know, as freshman, sophomore understanding that that number one is that the commitment they're making to to playing division one athletics uh, athletics in this environment you do have to grow up um, exponentially throughout a very short amount of time and so the ask has been all year um, make great choices you know um, off the field on the field obviously um, but to manage yourselves off the field is probably the biggest ask it's a it's a huge ask and so they've had to grow up and make some really hard decisions, you know, to, to kind of stay, um, I guess, uh, antisocial, so to speak, which our guys and, and most kids or all kids at, the, at this age group, they, that's kind of their deal. 
And, um, you know, what, what kind of, I guess, on the side note of that is, is the shame of that is, is that is part of their growth and development that they are kind of, you know, losing throughout this year. But at the same time, they're Division One athletics, so the commitment level is extremely high so that, yes, they have to grow up really, really fast. And, and have I seen that? Absolutely. You know, and it, just kind of going back to Lee's question earlier is that just from the time we started this whole deal – and kind of having them fall in line up to this point, it's been it's been a big ask and a big commitment. We see it day to day. Our guys are trained and they understand kind of where they need to go. That you know, in the fall we had to paint spots in the outfield where that is spread, uh, stretched. We don't do that anymore. They know exactly where their spot is, so it's kind of fun. Um, but uh, it's been good, and they've had to grow up. So I'm, again, maturity wise. That the other part of it is the baseball maturity as well, because we're so limited in our training. The ask has been to raise their baseball I- IQ day to day, and we're seeing that as we're getting closer to the season, which makes me feel a little bit better. One thing I was wondering is with the 11 months off, do you expect rust, or what are you expecting to see on the field when the guys take the field? Um, well, the, I can promise you this: we're not going to have the coach effort or energy. I can promise you that, you know. So I know I'm going to see that, and we're going to be very excited to, you know, a- actually play somebody else in the other dugout. So. Um, it wouldn't be rust. I think it would just more be game experience and game, you know, timing, those kinds of things that, that we're trying to challenge them with every day. But then when you put another uniform in the dugout, sometimes things start to move a little quick. And so what we're trying to do is slow those those moments down during our inner squads and the, when, when, when it kind of gets weird. Um, I think the only other thing that I'm really concerned about, obviously, is health, endurance, fitness, um, those kinds of things that, you know, over a long season, even though it's an abbreviated deal, our guys have not been battle tested for a long time. Um, And so um, I I worry about that every day we go out to practice, guys getting, you know, nicks and bumps. And we do have some of that going on right now. We have several guys in the last week that have tweaked a a hamstring, arms are a little bit sore. Um, and, and it's because we've kind of ra- ramped up the pressure on them a little bit to kind of compete at a high, higher level. But I do, I, I do worry about that all the time. So my job as a, as a you know, head coach of the program is to manage you know, each one of our players very carefully and making sure that um, we're, we're not t- putting too much on them too early in order to kind of finish the season healthy. Also, in most seasons, you have a lot of non-conference games. The schedule this year is dominated by the conference games uh how much different is the approach given that kind of mindset they're gonna have to have uh the difference in approach is honestly the uh, amount of opportunities that we have to repair problems week to week we don't have a tuesday or wednesday to play a game or you know if you're really reeling a little bit from a weekend series you have an opportunity to repair some of those mistakes to, to, to get ready for the next weekend um, and I, I have to tell you that making the decision to, to, to um, play two days a weekend, you know, was definitely we did not want to do that in conference. All the coaches wanted to go three days. But I can tell you, great decision by our conference to do that, to, to put us in a position to minimize the opportunities for bad things to happen as far as COVID goes. And so when you shorten those days, you have more of an opportunity to finish your season. So very good decision by, by the Mountain West Conference to go a, a doubleheader on a, a Saturday and a single on Sunday to kind of minimize those opportunities and, and, and keep our kids safe. Uh, also, other sports we've seen, there's been interruptions throughout the seasons. You kind of just have that as a given and, and have communicated that to the players. How do you think they'll deal with some things like that? And we've already talked about it, you know, and, it, and it's, it, it's, it kind of sucks, so to speak, because it's, it's inevitable, probably going to happen, you know. And so what I keep telling is like we have to – prepare for that mentally and then when it does happen we're going to have to prepare for it in real time and we'll see how that kind of plays out as we move forward and obviously um, how practice looks and how those things you know if we do miss a weekend or whatever it might be um, we're going to have to be really smart with what we're doing I don't want them to get um, practice fatigue either you know and so we're going to be really careful with that you know as far as how much time we're going to spend out on the practice field I want them to be fresh for the opportunities they have on the weekend and and so that's our job as coaches to make sure we're, we're managing that in a great way just so they stay fresh for the weekends when it does happen 
Hey, kind of piggybacking <clears throat> off of Kirk's question here, were you a fan of the conference tournament being eliminated this year? And uh, what does that do to just, you know, the regular conference schedule? Um, I'm never a fan of taking away games, period, you know. And so, you know, I think the conference tournament – um, was the wise decision based, again, on the health and safety of our young people. So I think, yes, that part of it I'm, I'm a fan of. I'm not a fan of taking away opportunity. Also, when we were slated to, to host the tournament. So um, that's selfish. Um, but uh, I think that the decision was made, again, not based on anything other than let's make sure we're, we, we keep our kids safe and healthy. And, again, you kind of look at the model that we have, 36 games uh, on, you know, on the weekends on two days, the right decision. Like I said, when they made it, all the coaches in the conference were not happy. And you start looking at it long term, I think it's 100 percent the right decision to do um, to make sure to hopefully get through a season and play the majority of your games. And, and so uh, if you just add a tournament on the back end, you're not just managing two teams. You have to manage four teams. And that becomes very cumbersome when, you know, once you've done with uh, when you're done with a big, long season like that. So I didn't like it, but now I think it's a smart move. Move. And so our job is to go out and win the regular season conference tournament or conference um, for the first time since 2004. So we have a lot on, you know, a lot at stake here and, and something to prove. We haven't done it for a long, long time. So I think it's time for us to, you know, finish the job this year. And a big piece of that is Troy Melton, obviously. He's draft eligible this year. Have you talked to him at all about any of that? Or is it just kind of a be where your feet are right now and be present in the moment? Well, he was getting a ton of attention last year, you know, and so I think he's been through that kind of romantic phase of getting, you know, the attention from scouts and, you know, the, the, the advisors, the agents, those type of people. So he's already been through that already. Um, now I just see him dealing with it in a little more mature way, you know, not, not really worrying too much about, you know, having a bunch of guns pointed his way or whatever. That sounds terrible, but radar guns. Um, but uh, thanks for laughing at that, too. But, uh, um, you know, I think he's, he's matured in that and dealing with it. And it's, it's really, it's as very similar, and I'm not saying he's this guy, but it's very similar with, with what Steven Strasburg had to go through during his sophomore, junior year. Just a ton of attention, a lot of eyes on him, a lot of preseason accolades, those kinds of things. And, but he already kind of went through that. So I, we talk about that as really just, I think he's grown up to it. And it doesn't really weird him out at all. So I think he's prepared to kind of go out and just, you know, be himself and compete. All right, I'll keep it quick. Uh, Coach, we talk about the uh, the double-edged sword, the pluses and minuses of being uh, chosen uh, preseason number one in the uh, conference? Uh, it's a g- good question. You know, again, I, really that's based on past history. Nobody's really saw us play last year, you know, and I think you kind of – Look at that we've won some conference tournament championships and and played in postseason recently. And, it, you know, it's nice to be, you know, uh, thought of that way. But I think it was kind of like the, the choice that, that you, you did have to make just based on past history, not really anything off of last year. So, um, you know, we're very honored. It's it's a neat deal. But I can tell you that, you know, our guys understand that they're mules and they still got to earn a lot of stuff that they, they, they need to to do on the baseball field so I'm not I'm not worried about it I, you know we're honored it's great but nothing no, we haven't won anything yet so we have a long season ahead there's so many variables that happen in baseball um, whether it's injuries you know a, a pitching guy goes down or whatever it might be and and so right now our focus is on winning the regular season championship in the Mountain West and and uh, securing that auto, automatic bid into the postseason. Hey, Mark, good to see you. Just curious when you were actually confident that, okay, the season's actually going to happen and what it was like just over the course of the last year, wondering about 2021 and um, just kind of the uncertainty. Obviously, football and other sports starting up, I I would assume, was a good sign. But when you felt confident, like, okay, we're actually going to have our opportunity and and what that was like once you Uh, got there. I I really felt like in the fall. But honestly, that was kind of one of those things that, um, we kind of lean lean on our administration and the people that are providing us with that day to day information, and so really all year JD has always said that we're going to do the best we can in order to compete. So it was really more of a situation is we're going to kind of prepare like we're playing, and if that thunderbolt hits, we'll deal with it. And so 
Really, I, you know, I've, I've been confident that we're going to play just based on what, what our administration has done, our university has done in order to keep our kids safe and healthy and continue to move forward. And I think that, again, it's uh, representative of what our football team did this fall and our men's and women's basketball team that, that has done this winter. And then all the other sports that are starting out, lacrosse and volleyball just started, water polo, um, you know, and so... I don't know if it was really a situation where I was worried about it because I was been I, I was told all along that we're going to do the best we can to, to to compete. So again, that was really great leadership from from our group, you know, telling us, hey, we're going to play, we're going to do everything we can to play. Um, now we're not there yet, so am I confident we're playing? I, you know, absolutely. Now it's here. Thanks, Mark. Best of luck. You bet. Thanks, Darnay. Uh, last question comes from Troy. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Um, and I wanted to ask, you mentioned about the um, game changes. Uh, no Mount West Conference tournament, doubleheaders on the weekend instead of Friday night. Is there any in-game changes that uh, college baseball will go through this year, uh, much like Major League Baseball did with reducing doubleheader lengths or starting a runner on second base or anything like that for extra innings? Great question. Yeah, we are doing that in our conference. So, you know, any extra games, uh, extra inning games will be settled with the starting a runner at at second base. Um, we also implemented a 10 run rule um, this year, which was in place for our conference tournament. Um, but we did we went ahead and passed that rule for the season this year as well. And again, our, our, our group has never dealt with, you know, playing double headers and those kinds of things. So um, managing that's going to be interesting. You know, you, you look at just a pitching staff and, you know, you travel with 12 pitchers, you know, and you're playing 27 innings in less than 24 hours. You're not going to see a ton of guys repeating a turn out there on the mound, you know, and so we have to be really, uh, uh, we have to manage it the right way. And what I tell our guys is that, you know, if you're a two-way guy right now, you're probably going to make the travel squad. And so um, if you can throw it forward, you know, 60 feet, six inches, you're probably going to have a good opportunity making that travel travel roster. But uh, those are kind of the main things, uh, you know, that those are the two real big ones. The 10-run rule in order to get, you know, if it gets out of hand, we can shut it down after seven innings and then uh, the, the extra inning deal with the runner at second base, which we've been practicing this week, actually. And are your double hitters two seven inning games? Or are you doing seven and nine, or what's that combination? They're nine. They're nine. Uh, all all three games are nine innings. And unless you, yeah, unless there was a, a situation where you had to make up a game um, on a return trip, which we hope that's not the case at all this whole year. But if there is an opportunity to play a fourth game, then that would uh, move those double headers to a seven and a nine.